City. Well, a very good evening and welcome once again to the Centennial Hall in uh, Rotrov in Poland for tonight's World Championship. The men in the 90 kilo, 69 kilo category, I should say, and 12 contenders for this championship lining up now. And this promises to be quite an interesting evening with so many competitors. It'll be a real task for the coaches to make sure that their lifters are lifting the optimum weight at the optimum times. Well, here is the start list, the first page of the 12 lifters there at the top there, two Iranians, they're not brothers but cousins, and then uh, the uh, Venezuelan there, the Pan Am champion for this season. And the heaviest of the class there, Junior Sanchez from Venezuela, weighing in at six, exactly 69 kilos. The lightest of the class, the 19-year-old from Azerbaijan, that's uh, Fididun Guliev, who weighed in at 68 kilos, 29. So let's meet them one by one. And this is Sajad uh, Barusi, uh, the Asian bronze medalist from last year. Here's his cousin, Jabba Barusi. Both of these men from the Shiraz region in Iran, this season's Asian champion. And so to South America and Junior Antonio Sanchez Rivero. As you can see, America's number one at the Pan American Championships this year. Just 24 years of age. And Vanek Avekisian uh, for uh, Armenia. Avetisian, I should say, for Armenia. Fourth in this year's European Championships. Yang Shenxi, well, a big occasion for him, as you can see, didn't get a total at this year's Asian Championships. Kim myung hyuk just missed out on the medals at the London Olympic Games a little more than over a year ago. And so to Jose Gavino Mena, also involved in the Pan American Championships representing Colombia. And Firadun Guliev, this is the lightest man of the class, the Universiad champion from Kazan last July, he won that title. And so to the European champion, Oleg Chen, Russia, with their tails up after success earlier today. And then Daniel Godeli from Albania, just 21 years of age, his big occasion so far this season, winning the Mediterranean Games. And for France, uh, this is uh, Bernardine Le Duc, Matam, one of a long line of Matams who've transferred from Cameroon to France. And finally, uh, Liao Kui, the Olympic champion from Beijing. Those are your contenders. Well, welcome back. And earlier today, we had the B group competition. And on the stage now, representing uh, Germany, the promising Robert uh, Joachim, 132, 135, and this effort for 137, the Germans with a new development program. And this performance in the B group, good enough to give him the gold medal in the first half of that. But not only was he good in the first half, he was also pretty effective in the second discipline, the clean and jerk. Came out for 165, that was his first successful attempt, and then 170 on the bar for this second attempt. So Michaela, a very different type of challenge here, different hand grip, different positioning with the hands. Yeah, the clean and jerk, the hands are closer together, allows you to get your elbows up in that clean position. The second part of the jerk, the bar is driven with the legs to arm's length. So he's slipped with his back foot. But nonetheless, uh, a sequence of five out of six, the 170 clean and jerk going with a 137 snatch to give him a running total of 307. And as we begin this evening's competition, he is the man they've all got to catch at this particular moment. But actually, uh, having a look at some of the 
entry totals 307 well the vast majority of the competitors well over 330 So if you're just joining us, uh, a very good evening once again to the Centennial Hall here in Rosruff and Michaela Breeze and myself are looking forward to this men's 69 kilo competition. Twelve competitors and uh, two interesting Iranians in this competition and there's quite a story going about with the Iranians. The main coach uh, for Iran has been involved in quite a interesting conversation on the radio on television his name is uh, Bagheri he's here but the reason he's been involved is that some of his best lifters his big names including the super heavyweight champion of the world Ferhat Salimi not here and they've had a dispute with the coach there's a group of lifters who don't want to work with him and they're not here and there's a group of lifters who are working with him who are obviously here but all is not peace and calm in Iran So, first lift to uh, get underway, and it's going to be for Europe, uh, for Armenia in particular, and it's going to be Vanik uh, Abetisian to get us underway. The bar has been loaded with 132 kilos. This is the man who was fourth in Europe last season when he snatched 144 kilos, and that is his personal best to date so like a lot of lifters here Michaela um, not we suspect fully wound up for these particular world championships yes we're one year post Olympics this tends to be the year where the standards drop slightly this is where countries try new young lifters give them an opportunity to step onto the world stage in the build up for the next Olympic cycle well, this man's got enough experience, he's 26 years of age, and you can see there, goes into fourth place in the snatch because of the performances of three other B-group lifters who ended up with better kilos. Joachim of Germany, Valencia of uh, Ecuador, and also Yakubov of Uzbekistan. So the opening attempt now by the Colombian. And this is Jose Mena Moreno. Colombia have really impressed here. They brought a full team both in their women's division and their men's division. Jose, 19 years of age, Pan American bronze medalist this season, 135, and this would be straight away a personal best for him by five kilos. You've got to assume that he's nailed these kind of weights in training. Well, at the age of 19, improving rapidly. It's very comfortable. Opening attempt, 135. New personal best in competition. Uh, young man who was uh, sixth in the Junior Worlds this year. And has already, down in South America, picked up a youth and junior Pan American title in his time. So, clearly has something to offer. Interesting to watch him over the next couple of years to see how he moves forward. Has a sort of presence on the stage, which is always nice. Yeah, he does, and he's technically very proficient as well, which would be a great indication that he is going to move forward rapidly over the next few years. The desk where the chess game is played here by those different entry slips that are put in by the coaches. And with 12 lifters in the class, the coaches are going to have to be on their toes today. They are, it's quite a big group. Each lifter will have usually more than one coach, one coach to keep an eye on them in the warm-up room, to make sure they're warming up okay, load the bar for them. Second coach to keep an eye on the scoreboard and make sure that there are no sudden changes which might catch their lifters off guard. Avetisian coming out for his second attempt. So this is a five kilo increase. 
Not quite as comfortable there. I saw him lower the bar under control back to the hips. That's uh, an indication that he uses straps quite a lot when he's training. It can be quite difficult to transfer from using straps in training. You don't have to worry too much about your grip. You can see here, caught it and lowered it. <laughs> Now, just having a look at the opening weights, I think he's going to have to follow himself here because nobody else is going to want this, so he's got the best part of two minutes. The uh, man who's posted the biggest of the opening totals, Oleg Chen, the European champion for Russia. And it's now, as we get to this particular weight class, that the Europeans now tend to take on the Asians. Yes, absolutely. This is really the, the best of each continent coming together to fight it out. And Oleg Chen is going to have his work cut out here against some very prestigious lifters with some big totals posted. We've got some big starting weights, particularly by Rio Hoi of China. We're going to see later, probably at the back end of the competition. Yeah, Liao Kui actually 155 on the list, five kilos more than Oleg Chen, but those two certainly likely to be in close competition. China with two in the class on this occasion. So, Avitisian, 137, third attempt. Good recovery. Yeah, much better. Just a frustration having missed the second attempt when you know you're capable of it. What makes this sport so fascinating is with only three attempts, you've really got to make each one count. Just let his bum drift up as he came off the floor. Corrected it well. It's always fascinating watching the coaches on the replay. The thing that really fascinates is why do they always sway and bend to the side? I, mean, I don't understand, I don't understand why you can't stay vertical to watch it. <laughs> You're trying to almost correct the lift yourself when you're watching it. So this man representing France, formerly from the Cameroon, Bernadine. Matam, a name, or at least the family name Matam, very familiar in France. So many lifters have come from the Cameroon to take advantage of the support and training that the French can offer. Little glance at the clock, seven seconds, six, five, needs to get moving, three, oof. Yeah, you'll get that. You can see his arm lock is not great. Arms have to go to lock and stay there. No flexion of the elbows. Well, one of the referees doesn't uh, favour that and has given a red light. The central referee today, Pashik Alavardanya of Armenia, Mary Hancock. Uh, also refereeing today and also Don McNeil of uh, Canada it was uh, Don McNeil who wasn't satisfied with that lift, but it's two to one he's got it so we move on and we move to the first of the two Iranians now this is Shajad uh, Belarusi 24 years of age, third in the Asian Championships last year and a little bit on performance in recent times behind his cousin. Coming down to 15 seconds now. Ten. Five. The Iranians hailing from Shiraz, which is 
the fifth biggest city in Iran, very historical city, the sort of middle to south of the country, about 700 kilometers from Tehran, and famous for poets and literature and wine and flowers. If you've never been there, Michaela, now you have a reason. <laughs> Firidun Guliev, the lightest of the class at 68.29, opening up here on 140, just two kilos short of his personal best. That's Lassen Vanev, coach in the wings, formerly, of course, from Bulgaria. Well, he did well to get that, drove straight out of the squat position, gave him a chance to get back underneath the bar. Into the lead. Three kilos up on the B group. There is uh, Zlatan. Oh, and that's why he just jumped backwards from the bar. Mena Moreno. Back on the stage here for Colombia. Second attempt, 1-4-0. Five kilo increase. Didn't quite get the kick that he needed on the bar there. It was a bit slow and sluggish on one speed. There needs to be acceleration. Needs to exert the force on the bar. Didn't quite execute that. Not fast enough changing direction to get underneath. I'm sure we're going to see a more confident attempt coming out. He's had a feel for the weight now, knows what it's like. These are new territories for him. Yes, but it's a decent question he's asking himself to go five kilos up. Remember, he was go he's going for uh, a weight that is ten kilos more than his previous best. But we already know that he's making progress. Unusual for China to have two lifters in the same category. Well, they've got two men, and both of them in different ways have blotted their copybooks, and we'll come to that when we see them. Now, he didn't have to come this quickly, it could have taken more time, but he's got over a minute now. But he seems to be the sort of lifter that really likes to get on with it. The danger is rushing it. What a pity. He was very close to being able to do that. You can't, can't criticise him for not trying. He gave that everything he could. So close. It's not worth trying to hold on to it there. That's when you risk the shoulder or elbow going. Now, Mr. Matam, second time of asking now, started off on 139, going 142. You might remember him from the European Championships in Toronto earlier this year when he actually collected 143 kilos and that's his best result today in this particular discipline moving the bar to a place where he's comfortable with it 
glance at the clock. I remember he got it down to two seconds before he lifted his first attempt. Well, I would like to see him get out of the way if he's going to drop it behind like that. I know everybody has their own timing, but I, I always feel uncomfortable when you see lifters really leaving it down to the last five seconds or less. Oh, they're fully in control. They know exactly how long they've got. Oh, yes. It's not, it's not good watching it, though. You, you, you never know if they know. But there is a clock just on the platform. It's quite easy for the lifters to see. <laughs> I still think it's something that, you know, it, it's not a, a perfect piece of coaching to end up with that sort of minimal time in which to make the lift. When you come on the stage with, say, 45 seconds in which to achieve the task. No, if you've got a lifter that takes a good, good part of that minute, then the coach's responsibility is to make sure the athlete is there and ready to go with a minute on the clock. It's up to the lifter then how long they take. But obviously the clock's there for a reason. It's to make sure that the competition moves through. So it gives up the lifters in the warm-up how long it will take them to get to top weights just in time for when they're called. I just think though, Mikado, when you... I mean, you may have a completely different view, but from my point of view, leaving it down to the last couple of seconds there actually increases the pressure, increases the stress. It depends. If you left to come out with, with virtually no time at all, then yeah, it can do. But at the same time, you'd rather a lifter takes the time that they've got rather than rush it. So here, he's come out onto the platform with 50 seconds to go. He's got plenty of time, and he's going to use that time. This is the way he prepares. And each lifter is different. Some lifters prefer to come on, get on with it. Other lifters want to take that split second to visualise it before going. Well, I'd, I'd have described his approach on the stage as a wonder. No, I think that's calm and collected. A lot of lifters also will wait for the 30-second buzzer before addressing the bar, just so that doesn't put them off. Well, he's down to 15 seconds again. Now down to 11 and 10 and 9. He's going to be... No. If he went out there with a minute, if he went out with 30 seconds, he'd still have a couple left on the clock. Well, I'm just uncomfortable to see a lifter actually delivering or not delivering in his case. You might, you might get it into your mind what you need to do. But when you're taking that length of time... He doesn't care how uncomfortable we feel sat here watching. No, yeah, that's true, but I can also think that it could drift out of his mind as much as anything else. As you gather, I'm all for getting on with it. Really? <laughs> you want to get out there and have a go, David? Uh, I think not. <laughs> Guliev, 143 kilos. He's got 30 seconds from now. They're waiting for the buzzer again. Taking his time. <laughs> Driving up with the chest, needs to get a bit more full extension. Well, they know the competition they're in tonight here, which is why you've seen the lifters so far pushing themselves to new personal bests. Because they're all aware of the fact that uh, to stay anywhere near the others, that they've just got to take the risk. They've got to go for it. Yeah, it's got to be a calculated risk, so with only three attempts, you really do need to try and get one in. Daniel Godelli for Albania in foreground there. Fairly calm and collected. It's due to start on 145. The bar is on 143 already. He probably won't have uh, any more to take in the warm-up room. Maybe one. <laughs> Oh, 
There you can see in third place the Frenchman, in fourth place the man who won the B group uh, earlier in the day, taking the scalp of Abetissian. And there at the bottom of your screen the lifters, the last three there who yet to start along with uh, the others. There's quite a few out there, Jabba Berusi and Sanchez Rivero, Niang, Shenxi, Kim of People's Republic of Korea and Chen, and Godelli, and the Hui, the Ao Hui. Okay, not happy with that, just taking a minute. Well, he's got time to do it. Still got 40 seconds. Chalk just dries the hands out, make sure you don't slip off the bar. That combined with a hook grip, the funnest trap between the fingers and the bar, gives you ultimate grip strength. Oh, look at that, oh, come on, steady. Yeah, he's there. Great effort. So, he's got his new personal best of 143, fire kilo. And the bar surely going up now to, well, 144 it looks like. And it's going to be the other Berussi, this time uh, Jabba. Now Jabba's been in better form than his cousin in recent times. He won the Asian Championships back in June. Asian Championships of course in Astana in Kazakhstan. Hosts of next year's World Championships. So Borussi, 1-4-4. Just a kilo shy of his personal best that he set in the Asian Championships. Oh, in fact, my apologies there. In fact, three kilos shy. But no matter. In the end, pretty good first attempt. Yes, it was. Just see how quick these guys are underneath the bar, how fast they are into a deep receiving position. No time to waste. Twenty-five, thirty-one, forty on the bar there. Yeah, getting very close to coming into the competition when you've got that sort of weight on the warm-up bar, almost at the final phase. And Lian Shenxi. The man who didn't get a total this season in the Asian Championships, although he did actually snatch 146 kilos, he lost his way in the clean and jerk. 45 seconds. Four years of age, two years younger than his teammate, and of course, in terms of achievement, way below the spoils that Lee Hui has taken. Well, he's coming out here with a lot to prove, and I think the Chinese selectors have been very generous, I guess, giving him this place. Who won the uh, Asian Games? Did he win the Asian Games? He's coming out here having uh, recently won. Chinese game, sorry. He came out yeah. having bombed at the Asian Games. Yeah, it was um, the other Chinese lifter who was the dominant force in the Chinese Nationals this year. Well, I just the wonder what credentials he's been selected on. They must obviously see potential in this young lad. So now it's the turn of Kim Yong Hook for uh, People's Republic of Korea, 22 years of age. I haven't had a chance to uh, have a word with the 
North Korean fans to find out whether they were drafted in from Warsaw or if there's some base here in Rothschild for them. Five seconds. Is that the best you've seen so far? Well, it's tidy. No issues there, are there? So, 145 takes it straight into the lead here. Great extension, very fast. No effort wasted. And we're at this particular moment 20 kilos short of the snatch world record set by Georgi Markov for Bulgaria. Now Godelli, same weight. Oh, not very tidy at all there. No. Brought it on bent arms all forwards. It's a bit desperate for my liking. Came off onto his toes very early. Never really pulled it back. Yeah, Godelli, bronze medalist at the Europeans in Tirana on his home stage. But now back to the Baruzi boys and Sajad. Five kilo increase. Gets this, goes into the lead by virtue of lighter body weight. For me, that's a big disappointment because overall, when you look at his performance record, it's in this section of the competition where he needs to make hay because the clean and jerk is tougher for him. He's got one attack left. Not too much wrong with that. Maybe he's a little bit more leg drive needed. So, Liang, Liang, Shenxi, second attempt on 145, if he gets it, he does go into first place in the opening section here. Again, it would be by lighter body weight. Oh, oh, dear. Just the first soft underneath the bar. Come on, he's got to get up for this. He's really got to get himself psyched. He looks almost too calm, too collected, not really in the zone at the moment. Well, Godelli's got to come in, so that's quite useful for the Chinese lifter. Gives him a chance to recompose himself, but that was a long way away, Michaela, from being a good lift. Gudeli in the dark suit on the right of your screen. Tough waiting room, isn't it, David? Yeah. So those sofas there are literally 10 yards up, right? Not even that. Five, five meters off the stage. So the lifters don't have to go all the way back to the warm-up room. It's not that much further, but it does save the legs, gives them a chance to sit, compose themselves. So Berusi coming out to take his third attempt. the back of the four meter square platform 
maybe anticipating a little walk forward here. Into the red zone. The sport is perfectly safe if you let go of the ball when you're supposed to. You let go of it just in time there. But that leaves him on 140, which is highly vulnerable. A lot of the big performers could actually end up by overtaking him. Just through the shoulders back then, putting a swing on the bar. Hard to control. Well, he was under pressure, and so is this man, Liang Shenxi. 24 years of age, as you said, coaches, they must have thought enough about him to bring him all this way, and now he's really got to stand up and be the man. He has, he's under a lot of pressure here, especially having bombed out at the Asian Games, he needs to make a total of his own confidence. That's better. So he can do it. He can do it, and that will be a big boost to his confidence. So that lighter body weight does take him into the lead, 68-61, he weighed in at. And it was actually the clear jerk that he bombed at the Asian Games, so... Uh, Now there's a bit more pace in the competition now, it was a little bit on the uh, slow side but now you sense that things are going to move forward quite interestingly. The Pan American champion representing Venezuela, 24 years of age, been looking forward to seeing this man, Junior Sanchez. Oh, he's not going to get that. The right elbow came out of lock. Even if he had stood up with that, he'd have been in trouble. Just gave the bar a, a little look to say, I'm going to be back. Over the past few seasons, he's had a, quite a good run of achievements. Uh, second in the Pan American Games in 2011. Uh, won the South American Championship in 2012. Fifth at the Olympic Games in London when he totaled up 328. Now, Jabba Barusi. Now, Jabba Barusi. 144, three kilo increase this for him. And this would take him on to his personal best mark. He's 22, he's two years younger than his cousin. Two years younger and a couple of kilos better. It'd be great to have two members of the same family, at least being able to train together and bounce off each other, push each other. Down to ten seconds again. Oh, okay. Well, you can see there, right on the front edge of the platform is a piece of tape. That tape was on his thumb. It's been picked up by the loaders. I used to change my tape just before I went on the platform to make sure it was fresh, so that didn't happen. Very rarely that happens, and that's going to have... Uh, let's watch his right hand. Oh, there goes the thumb. It's OK, it was only the tape. <laughs> Dramatic, at least in pictures. Now Godelli with uh, 45 seconds for Albania. Oh, not very pretty, but he's got it. Not a great elbow lock. There was no movement, so he'll be fine. Remember, he missed at 145, so he bided his time, put up the bar by two kilos. That's the president, by the way, in the grey suit there, Elish. Rushed the starting position, didn't really set himself. Very aggressive throughout the lift. Junior Sanchez, Venezuela, just prowling up and down the stage there. 
in his second attempt, 147. Did a clear on this on the London Olympic platform? We see Junior under pressure. Two failures, one to come. This is not the visualization that you practiced beforehand. So close as well. He's coming back from the bar, which is beat. If he only came back half the distance, he'd have saved that. New tape on the thumbs, let's hope it stays on this time. I need to be really focused coming out for this. So, Jabba Barusi, third attempt, 147. Effort. That second attempt would have thrown him off. With uh, the shot system, something like that happens unexpected, but that was a great recovery, just shaking his head there, knowing that there was a wasted lift beforehand. It was a shame. And that puts him into second place. He ends up equal with his performance in both the Asian Championships this year and also the University Ad where he collected 147. Now straight back to Sanchez. Now two big blobs of red and one final chance. Fifth in the Olympic Games was decent but he's still got to find the consistency to move from those junior successes, regional successes into being a real world contender. But again, another lifter who, quite honestly, is going to kick himself for that. He's gone into third place. The man still leading at the moment is Daniel Godelli of Albania. He's got the 147, but has also got the lighter body weight at the moment. But Chen of Russia, Yao of China, still to start. And now, Kim Yon Hook, 22 years of age, fourth in the Olympic Games. This title won by China's Lin Wenfeng, 157 kilos. This man made 145 in the first half of the Olympic test. Well, not quite as good as extension as he had on the first lift. Just enough to get underneath it. Two out of two. One to come. Takes the lead. Stop injection for the Stavyame Daniel Godelli Albania. Seven left. Shoji Podesh. And so to the European champion who will be next on stage. Oleg Chen. Bar at 151 kilos. That's just a kilo up on his original opening weight, so no issue there. The one man who hasn't started, Liao Hui who is due to come in at 155 and at the moment that's still the plan 
Первый патрон, сладкий танк. Сработник с нами за знаком тего рвания в шедевчестве. Well, this man is perfectly capable of not only starting off with one Y five one successfully, but he could go to perhaps one five seven, maybe even a little bit more than that. But he needs this to give himself the basis. The other interesting thing about him is that also he's one of the more consistent guys. When you look at his stats over the last couple of years, he's been consistently putting in good snatch performances of 150 to 157. He has. Very interesting again. We see another lifter with the hands extremely close. I can only guess that his wrists or his elbows or shoulders struggle to take it with his hands wider. It just means he's got to move that bar that bit further. Goodelli now to uh, counter attack. No one near, just threw his shoulders back, jump back. Never fully committed there. Not the best technically. That's game over now for Gadelli. It is indeed, so still the other Chinese lifter out there waiting in the wings to start. And Kim Yong-Kuk with uh, one attempt to come. 152 kilos. So you would have to say they've planned this pretty well here. 145, a 5 kilo increase, now the 2 kilo increase. Plenty of supporters for the people's Republic of Korea. He's got it, just needs to stand. Which he does, and puts himself into first place now. So, we have five lifts to come, three from Liao Hui of China, and two from Oleg Chen. Oh, he's just guaranteed himself a medal. The question is, what colour? Can the other lifters surpass him? Snatch world record set by Georgi Markov has been around for a long time, 165 kilos, set 13 years ago in the Sydney Olympics. So, first appearance in these championships of the Beijing Olympic champion. A man who was disqualified from the World Championships of 2010 for taking one of the banned substances on the water list. So coming back, but did come back at the National Games in September. And he came back with a successful snatch of 161. Quietly convincing. Yeah, I think he's, um, he's got a lot to prove. Oh, a little bit, of, little bit of personality there. Yeah, I think he's got a lot of respect to earn back from fellow contenders and, and the likes. Two year ban is always frowned upon. So Oleg Chen now, the bar 
up here to 156 kilos so he's taking a five kilo increase now Chen weighed in at 68.81 Liao at 68.52 that's relevant at this stage he's got it staggers forwards so Chen answering the questions here 156 well will he opt now just try and stay with Liao of China I think another 5 kilos is going to be a big ask he is so powerful so fast underneath the bar so, are the Chinese happy for Chen to lift out, or does Chen want to put the bar up and just try and persuade the Chinese lifter to come out and take his second attempt? 159. Chen is going for 159. I think this is a sensible call rather than going all out for a, for a gold medal or to try and stay with Liao. He's going for a weight that he thinks he's capable of to try and stay in contention and as close as possible. Well, he has gone up, he has gone to 160, just playing for time by the looks of it. The coaches are allowed to change the weights in the warm-up room uh, twice. They upped it to 159, the bar was loaded, in that time the clock had to stop and then they put 160 on. Again the clock had to stop while the bar was being loaded. So both men have posted 160 but it's the Chinese lifter who comes out to go first. Remember he is the lighter of these two. Chen 68.81 68.52 for Liao Liao world champion in Goyang in 2009 in Korea and on that occasion 160 is the number of kilos that he lifted so he's done this before but Chen hasn't Superb, faultless lifting. Just look at, look how long I can hold it for. Easy, he says, easy. Let's not get too co cocky, too confident. He's still got one to go, and so is Chen. Yeah. And it was better than the first one. So his confidence growing a little bit now. But Chen coming out now, and Chen may not win the day in the first half of the competition. But what he wants to do is to stay as close as he can to the Chinese lifter Yao Wei and Oleg Chen now it's not about the medals it's about the position the number of kilos oh, oh. wow look at that oh. that's a lift that's a personal best by three kilos in the world championships three out of three and, and that absolutely was his best lift he blew that one out of the water that was incredible phenomenal speed on the bar uh, we've got a world record attempt coming 166 they're after judge well they i say liao hui is after georgie markov's 13 year old record now he tried 163 in the nationals and didn't get it so 166 we've seen quite a few world record attempts but none of them have come off so far at these championships so he won the Olympics in Beijing, lifted 158 there, he won the world title in 2009, lifted 160, won the national games this year, lifted 161. But this is of a different dimension.
He has 20 seconds in which to settle and lift. didn't happen yet again another world record attempt not achieved and the interesting thing for me there was have they done the right thing and the answer is probably because when you look at the clean and jerk opening figures Liao Hui has posted 190 and Chen 175. Well, Liao is coming into this competition in some superb form. If he's going to be coming out on a 190 clean and jerk, that is significantly ahead of any other athletes that have entries uh, posted here today. Just noticeable as well that the world record is 197. So if he is out on his own, who knows, we could see another world record attempt. So the snatch results there, you can see Chen did nothing wrong, three out of three, personal best, can't criticise him at all, Kim myung also three out of three, and those are good lifts there, but you can see Daniel Godelli, one out of three, and uh, that's the problem for him, and you see when he dropped down 140, uh, 135, you can see there's a vast difference, an ocean between these lifters and the men truly till the B group are surpassed. It's okay to breeze together with myself, David Goldstrom, and if you are just joining us at this halfway stage in the competition, the situation is that the Olympic champion, the two-time world champion, the snatch and total world record holder, is absolutely in a class of his own. A world record of 176 kilos, and he's got a big start over the rest of the field. But if we take him out of the equation and accept that he's very very likely to take this championship the next five men Kim from North Korea Zavaric from Poland Alimov from Uzbekistan and Tagian from Iran are only separated by five kilos so this competition is far from over and remember Poland have yet to medal at these championships and they're the host nation so they're pinning their hopes on Zavaric when I say yet to medal, he has got a bronze from the snatch, but I'm talking about the overall honours. Well, that's what I was just going to say there, I think, yeah. Poland's first medal at these World Championships. Can he bring home some more? Wow, look at that. Look at a squat jerk. The cuts of Slovakia, 180. Made two out of three in the first half. Trying to improve from uh, seventh position. For a lifter that is so tall, that really is super difficult to execute. It's not a lift that you coach. You see the clean, he's got the legs to stand with it. But let's just watch this power jerk. Drives to arm's length, but has to drop into a deep squat position. It's probably the hardest jerk to do. Um, quite simply, because lifters don't have the leg strength to stand up with it again. But the clean is hard enough, let alone doing it twice. So, goes into first place, 3.33, so now Gonzalez from the B group has been surpassed in the overall position, but not yet in the clean and jerk. His leading score, 183, this is 181. Oh my goodness gracious me, this man is having a nightmare, that is his fourth failure. Well, you know, when he didn't total in the Universiade in Kazan in July, at least he got a 145 snatch. So far, well, it didn't look anywhere near, did it? It wasn't even on top of his shoulders. Elbows were down. So Gabriel Mena now to come out for his second attempt. Four kilo increase to take him to 331. Entered a total of 340, so he's a bit shy of that mark. Needs this. Well, 
Well, again, the jerk very solid overhead. The clean he had to work harder for actually sunk into a spot position. Do you know what, David? It puts more stress through the knees trying to stop halfway down than it does hitting the bottom and driving straight out. But the 331 is, in one sense, nine kilos short of his entry total, but in another sense, it's six kilos up on his personal, on his previous personal best. So, it's progress. And now, attempt number five. Oh, he's got the clean. Oh no, oh. Well, Is it too close to the wind pipe again? Five out of five. Do you know what, if I was him, I wouldn't bother taking the th um, third attempt. He's done, he's finished. There's a little shake of the head there. Oh, it was close on the windpipe as well. Well, it's a difficult call for the coaches because their job is to turn him around and get him out there if they can, but I think they're really fighting a losing battle here. And uh, unofficially I've got a retirement signal on my board here now and the competition goes on, 183 the bar's going to now and this for the arrival of Edinson and Gulo Rivera, the second of the two Colombians. Now, he only uh, got two of his three attempts and 143 to 146. He didn't really progress that far and he's 12th at the halfway stage. 183 though. Interesting to see what he can build on this. Again, this would be a, a personal best for him. A kilo more than he lifted in the Pan Ams in which he got a bronze this year. And 50 seconds, plop, counting down, so is there going to be a change, or is there going to be a rush? A little bit of a rush. <laughs> well, he's still got 35 seconds on the clock, he's still got plenty of time. Thirty-one years of age, he's the older of the two Colombians by three years. Shouts of desperation from his teammates. Oh, I don't know, David. Right elbow to me. Well, the central judge has decided that that's not to his satisfaction. That's Peter Molnar of Hungary. The uh, jury... Well, one in favour. But the thing is that the jury has to be unanimous. As we saw this afternoon, it's quite difficult to get a unanimous jury, but you've only got five of them. That was quite a blatant press out, I thought. Nonetheless, he's got the lift by two to one. So... And it's... Demir... Demir Demir coming on to the stage now. 185. Just looking at the planned lift there. That was what they planned to do. Undo that belt quickly, get the oxygen back in. Just stood up with that bar a bit close to his windpipe. Stops the oxygen to the brain. He's felt a bit lightheaded there. If we see the replay, we'll see his whole body shaking as he tried to set himself for the jerk. 
Richard Kacz przygotowuje się i prawic. Edinson of Colombia. First attempt, 185 kilos. Small adjustment of the hands there. Just allow the jerk to be a bit easier. Didn't have quite so far to drive it. Mark Buck is in the lead in the clean and jerk, moves him up to third place overall, so useful opener there for Edinson. And now Richard Takac coming on for Slovakia. Now, you were explaining when he successfully jerked 180 kilos how difficult this is in terms of technique and the margins for error are minuscule. Oh, there's, there's no margin for error on a squat jerk. Not only do you have to have tremendous shoulder flexibility, but also a huge amount of leg strength. So why would you choose this particular technique? Probably because he's lacking on the drive, unable to drive the bar high enough to be able to move into a split or a power position. You need to drive the bar right up high off your shoulders. And he obviously finds it easier to drop underneath. So much harder. I don't think I've ever even trained for that kind of lift. Power jerks occasionally, but squat jerks never. Yeah, and these are serious weights, so you know, putting yourself under the bar in this particular manner. Yeah, he just lacks the leg drive to get the bar up off his shoulders. So compensates by dropping into that squat position. He's got the courage to put himself under the bar in that manner. Not many would do that. Now Demirev got to come out again and try uh, 185. Let's hope he can see clearly after the clean. Just about had enough time to recover. Wasn't? No. Oof. Never set himself there after the clean. It's a very deep split as well. It had to be. That was a Superman jerk. As he dipped, hips went behind the bar, dropped his chest, and just drove it forwards. Nothing underneath the bar. How on earth does he expect to hold on to it? Well, he's under pressure now. One minute fifty left on the clock before he's got well, to start his next lift. I'm doing the maths here as well. Uh, he lifted 150 kilos in the first half. He posted a total of 350. So that would mean he needs 200 to get to that. So there, Colombia at the top of the table. That's uh, a nice thing to see at the moment, the first and third. And you can see some good lifting in the clean and jerk, as that scoreboard tells you. But uh, as we surmised, uh, Captari of Moldova calling it a day after the fifth failure and a prudent decision. So Zemir Demirev got to come out and this is in a sense all or nothing because he didn't get anything out of it in terms of the first half of the competition down in ninth place coming back after a long time out of the sport this former world bronze medalist 
best part of 30 seconds remaining in which to achieve 185 kilos to give himself a total no and a second man from the A group goes out of the competition and I know that you have strong views about people who come back from four year bans well I think you know the results speak for themselves and in that case it just did say no more now Kim, remember he brings forward 163 kilos, he's been faultless so far, but remember he's only 19 and he's coming out for 187 kilos. Are you going to call it a mic? <laughs> that split second silence where we're looking to see who's going to make the comment. I don't know what to say, that was, that was just awesome. Very efficient. There's no room for error there. He really executed that lift superbly well. Yeah, that's very satisfying. And he takes the lead. He's got a total of 350 kilos. He's five short of what he lifted in winning the Asian Championships this season. And it may be one of those championships for the North Koreans, you know, Michaela, that, you know, they get a lot of silvers, but it's really educational. They will have learned a lot from this journey. Oh, yes, they would. Goodness me, it's, it's been um, yeah, you put this learning curve. You put this in the equation, you know, you've got two world championships to come. And both of those are to count for places in the Olympic Games, start earning points to earn places next year. So there's a great opportunity for some of these Olympics to gain experience on the big platform when actually the results don't count towards Olympic selection and qualification. So this will be a big learning curve for many lifters here. But this is where it gets really interesting as well because Kim is in the mix for silver and bronze. So is Zavaric here. Also, you can't rule out Alimov and you can't rule out either Tagian of Iran because only five kilos separated those four men at the halfway stage. So we've really got two things to concentrate on, but one will come much later. He's got a personal best of 197, but I've never seen that and I didn't track that, so I don't know where that's come from. But in competitions like this year in the Europeans, 182, the Olympics, 182, whichever way you look at it, that's a really good opener for him. But he did have to work for it. He's making good progress. Quite rightly so, if the training program, if the principles are correct, then all of these athletes should be making fairly rapid progress. It's usually when you get to late 20s, early 30s, that if anything, it's, it's more hanging on. But Savaris is only 22, so... He's at the got, peak of his career. Well, he's got the world ahead of him, hasn't he, really, at the That's moment. Right. And these young men as well, as they're going through growth spurts, as they're thinning out, they have extra testosterone, which is really going to help with strength gains. Right, second attempt here for Edison and good old Rivera, the other Colombian, his teammate has finished with a total of 333, that looks hard. Well, he's got it, and he's feeling good. <laughs> There really is an atmosphere this evening, Dave. This is the first evening where the whole room has been buzzing. Gets that 190, goes to 336. He's sitting in bronze medal position at the moment.
Richard to catch. Well, can he do? Can he master this technique for a third time? He's gone 180, 185, 190 now is the question that he faces. He's on 338, so this is for 343. Two five kilo increases. Richard, 28 years of age. A European bronze medal a couple of seasons ago. His highest achievement to date. A bridge well, too far. Yeah, I think he's going to be feeling that either in the hip or the knee. Now, Cherimai of Albania, well, he really is on the catch-up game here because two extremely costly failures in the snatch. He's at sixth place at the halfway stage but only brings forward 155 kilos and just to remind you that Lu Xi Chun of China 176 that just shows you the difference 21 kilos behind at the halfway stage Oof, that looks hard The jerk was very solid, but the clean, unconvincing in my view. And he's trying too hard with his upper body, not really driving powerfully with his legs to get maximum height on the bar. What is interesting though is he's one of the very few lifters in the whole world championships who's not using any wrist supports, any knee supports, or a belt. Of course, while he was suspended, he would be training, but the other side of the, that coin is the fact that he was only legitimately allowed to enter competition in mid-July. So he missed the European Championships, he missed the University Games, he missed all the opportunities, he missed the Mediterranean Games. So, you know, you could say also ring rusty, because he's only had from July in earnest to get ready for this. It's a lifter who's very fast, very powerful, but technically just lacking, and that's going to cost him on the heavier weight. The coach there has just said to him, come on, you know, drive your yeah. legs, ex extend. I must say that in the suit there is the president of the Albanian Federation, and I, I think he gets too involved. I think, you know, I've watched this and I've seen this, I saw it in Albania as well. With it. I think he creates the wrong sort of pressure. At this stage, leave it with the coach and the lifter. Right, they're on their feet again. The flags are flying for the Democratic Republic of North Korea. And... Kim coming out for 193, five kilo increase, and this will put him in the first place in the clean and jerk and the overall competition. So this for 355. Well, that buried him at the bottom, found the legs to stand up. He's got the strength overhead though to finish the job and he has finished the job, nothing wrong with that for me. Three white lights coming straight up from the judges. Brilliant, the jerk was great, he drove as high as he could but then split nice and wide, dropped nice and low to get underneath it. Now this, this is where it becomes interesting because he weighed in at 76.32. Remember, Zavaric opponent, one of his main opposition, he's heavier. So Zavaric on 351, he can't take four kilos, he's got to take five, which is where he's posted 195 to come in. But it's nip and tuck at the moment. And remember, the Iranian isn't going to start till 195. Now he's got the most kilos to catch up in this fight for silver and bronze, but I wouldn't rule him out yet, because he's actually got 
Clean and jerk of 203 kilos this season. David, I'm just looking at the scoreboard at the moment. It really is so, so close. I'm, I'm, I keep looking at this and I'm trying to make a call on who I think is going to take the silver bronze medal here, but I can't do it. It's way too close. Meanwhile, Edison Angulo from Colombia to finish off. Four kilo increase. This for 340. This will be 13 kilos up on his Pan American score of this season. No. Well, it was an easy deadlift. He finishes on 336, which is still an improvement of 9 kilos. And as in pretty well every sport we know, Michaela, there are those who come into a competition like this who know that they are really truly in for the shout of the medals. And there are other athletes that come in with targets, the steps that they're looking to make. I think you have to come in to something like this with your own game plan, regardless of how close you are to the medals. It's so easy to get drawn into a battle with everybody else, but at the end of the day, you've got to control the controllables. You can control what you can, worry about, let the coaches worry about the other lifters. Now, this is uh, Ulugbek Alimov of Uzbekistan. 158 he brings forward, he was in fourth place at the halfway stage. Missed out on the bronze medal by three kilos. Lighter than Savaric, so this is gonna this is gonna become interesting now if he can do this. interesting because that's put him into the lead in the clean and jerk and has zoomed him up to second place in the overall standings he's limping though and that's just to uh, give a false clue to the opposition no, he was definitely limping he's suffering there but pain is irrelevant well, the coaches have got to be really sharp here because the situation is that Kim, with one attempt left, is on 356. Alimov is in second place now with 353. Zavaric in third with 351. The bar is going to 195 for his second attempt, which is what he needs to get in front. Well, actually, having a look at this now, Five kilos won't do it. It will only put him second. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. No. That's not allowed. Oh he's, he's dizzy as well. The lift the dips is considered an attempt at the jerk. Therefore a failure. So he's got one left, Alimov has got two left, Kim has got one left, and I reckon, well, Chelimai has got to come into this now, he, but he's 346, he's 10 kilos behind Kim. Well, this is where the other coaches start to play the game here. They want to get rid of Zabaric out of the way. So they'll be more than happy to put him in here. Then they know what their lifters have to do to make sure that he's not a player. Yeah, he's third at the moment. The leader hasn't even started. So, sadly for these fans, but well, the bar has gone up, David. It's gone up to 196. And that's for the appearance of Liu Xiaoxiong. Now, he did say he was going to come in at, one, at 205. So, what he's doing is securing the medals, making sure 
that having built up that advantage that he had with a snatch world record in the first half he puts one lift in here conservative makes sure the championship and then he can play so is he as good as we think he is he is Oh, goodness me. <laughs> oh. <Wow. laughs> you rarely see a squat jerk to have two in one competition. Well, he really is playing there. I reckon he could do that for three reps in training. Well, that was that note, which I wasn't in the gym, but somebody passed me a note that uh, he was seen in the gym, you know, doing a pause squat with 260 kilos. <laughs> So, there he is with 372, so pretty well with that attempt, making sure of the championship. Now, 196 for Rasul Tagian of Iran. Now, he only got one out of three, but he did get 158, which gives him some sort of an outside chance. He would go from where he is at the moment, fifth right up into second place in the clean and jerk and third in the total and this is not impossible based on what he's been doing this season and is he going to be more comfortable now in this discipline than he was in the first examination of the snatch which requires just that extra amount of precision or absolute precision 10 seconds. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. There's a... There has to be a... They can't give him that. No. No. Oh, my God. I can't believe it's two to one. How can it be two to one? That was... As clear as a foggy day in Beijing. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. I mean, you know, there are some that are marginal. You can't really see the right arm from here, but... Uh, that was shocking referee by uh, whichever referee gave yeah. him the white. Well, no, they, they had two or three attempts there to see it. Yeah. So, his chances, that's those of Tagian ebbing away. And this is Cherimai on the stage now. 5 kilo increase, this would take him to 351, he would lead in the clean and jerk and he'd be 4th overall and he still has one more attempt after this, he's creeping closer. Oh, it just about does it. Well, he might want to put some of that enthusiasm into actually lifting the weights. The shirt was nowhere near, was it? A couple of lifters under a bit of pressure right now. Well, I'd like to be in this fight for silver and bronze overall. Kim Kwang Song, he's in a pretty decent position, he's still in second place. Sadic of Poland at the moment has dropped down to fourth. Alimov of Uzbekistan is in third. But he's got to get this and then he's got to do something massive in the third attempt to give himself any sort of a chance. There's a clean and jerk medal perhaps in the offering which would be some sort of consolation. Oh no. Well, it's gone now, surely. Nobody uh, putting any bets on him on this third attempt. Sparic is still just there. Alimov also. Kim. Poland. Uzbekistan and North Korea fighting for the silver and bronze. Right, Kim wants to put this to bed. 
He wants the silver. He knows he can't get the gold. They all know they can't get the gold. <laughs> nice. He's really up for it, isn't he? Can he get the clean? Oh. Technically the best lifting in the competition so far. Not as strong as some of the other guys, but to the one. Yeah, I just wondered whether there was something there, but for me that was good enough. I mean, it'd be interesting to see. I hope we get a front replay. Just have a look at it. Is there a tiny press out? No, it's just movement. Yeah, it's not Shoulder the best movement. angle to see the replay no. from, but I didn't see any movement there. No. Well, Christoph. Well, Smaric now. This is you know, Kim's actually in the lead in the cleaning jerk. 359. And there's 196 on the bar. This is to try. No, it's not going to happen. He's got the bronze medal, and that's the only medal, I'm afraid, for the Polish fans from the snatch half of the competition. And so, one by one, they're falling by the wayside. You've got to take your hat off to the young lad from North Korea, haven't you, Kim? I mean, that's brilliant. He's done six out of six, and that deserves well what will ultimately be the second best medal but he's he's got look, at the moment he's in the gold medal position in the team and jerk but reality tells us that he's going to get three silvers you know you can't ask for any more than six out of six he, he's gone out there he, he's executed to to his game plan he's now got to go and sit and wait there's nothing else he can do so Chelimai now yeah it's all about clean and jerk honors at this particular moment he's in fourth place Tagian of Iran has got to come out and take his last attempt well at the end of it all only two out of six. And I have to say, you know, Romola, Begai as well. The Albanians, they yes. really don't get much. You know, all too often they're only making two out of six. They're just getting away with the total. That's just not good enough at this level. You've got to be much more consistent than that. Maybe because they're pushing the boundaries. Maybe they're pushing their own personal limits. Well, I think that's what happens a little bit. I was alluding to that with the president of the president there I just think he creates too much pressure you know if you've hired coaches let them get on with it now all the way from Isfahan Tagian now this would put him into the bronze medal in the clean and jerk with only two men alive so effectively this is for the bronze medal in the clean and jerk and third place in the total and that was better so was that as he pulled it out of the fire he might well have done <laughs> I think he just did Catapulted himself right back up into medal contention now. That really was a superb recovery. 354 kilos over into third place overall. And we stand now with four lifts remaining. And the one man who can change things here, of course, is Alimov. This man has two attempts left. He's on 353. He weighed in at 76.31. He's now challenging with a two kilo increase here for overall third. Just taking what he needs to take because Tagian was 76.54. So this will put him up 
these two kilos to 355 and then he's got one more attempt so he's securing a medal first and then he have, might have one go at Kim who's currently in the overall silver medal position Tremendous leg strength. Oh, this time the dip. Oh, he's got away with it. He has, and it's changed the scoreboard as well because he's pushed uh, Tagian out of the medals of Iran. He was the Iranian in third place in the clean and jerk. He was third place in the overall. Just watch the replay, David. The clean was very, very strong. But as he stood up now, just watch when he dips. The bend on the bar. Oh. Typical slow-mo replays. The bend on the bar was still coming down as he was trying to drive up. That's what I was referring to when he when he was lucky to get away with it. Well now having got that and being at 355 now we're looking at him versus kim kim 76 32 would you believe this for weights kim 76 32 alimov 76 31 and so kim is on 359 alimov's on 355 why is he going to 201? Why on earth is he going? I mean, uh, silver medal? What does he need? Yeah, but, he's a, uh, but hang on a second. He's, you know, he's on 355. He's the lighter of the two, and he's four kilos down. What is going? Yeah, 201. I, yeah, it's correct. So 201. This will be for the silver medal. Yeah, it would, it would enhance his lead in the cleaning jerk, and it would be for the silver medal. Just having a look at the, having a look at it, what he's done. I mean, he's never done 200 plus. He did 197 in the university ad, but this would, this would be some lift. It will. Can I just say as well that Lu Xu Shang, who is waiting in the wings for his second attempt, he's had an awful long wait between first and second lift. So let's hope that he hasn't faded out and gone to sleep back there let's hope he's uh, on fire ready to go so if he gets this he would have made five out of six Kim we've talked about him he's made six out of six deserves the silver medals but Good recovery. Has he got the legs now? Can he stay composed? No. He's done really well to fight back. But in a funny sort of way, Miguel, I think justice has been done because the man who's made six out of six has come out with the shiny reward. Yes, he has. Well, the bar is now going to 204 kilos. This is going to be is an attempt at a junior world record. Well, he can't be a junior world record because he's 29 years of age. Uh, this must be a, this is a total world record, I'm guessing, yeah? Uh, we're looking at 372. Total world record is 379. So this is, uh, what, four, eight kilos? Yeah, eight kilos up. Total world record attempt. Yeah. And then we'll have a think about the clean and jerk. Yeah, but also here, China are playing this a little bit on the risky side. He doesn't need 204 kilos to win the gold on the clean and jerk. He's looking at bigger things, world records. He's guaranteed the gold medal overall, though. Yeah. At the moment, he's only in third place in the clean and jerk. But he's got options. Must if, be if, he, if he doesn't get this, he does have one more attempt at his disposal. But why am I proposing that? Oh. Why am I even thinking about it? Well, <laughs> like we ever doubted him. So he set a snatch world record. He set a total world record. There's only... <laughs> 
That's a little nod for his sponsors. <laughs> Trying to get a new car, that's a car manufacturer by the way that he stood next to. Personally never looked up what that sort of car is, but have a look at this. Just incredible strength in the shoulders there. The legs to stand up, shoulder flexibility. Now. Well, he's no, he's caught it a day. He's caught it a day. He's not going to go off the Oleg Perepetrenov's record. The clean and jerk world record stands. He had the snatch world record. He had the total world record. He's improved both of those. He's been the master of men's 77 kilos. <laughs> and the gold goes to China. The silver to North Korea. The Democratic Republic of North Korea, People's Republic of North Korea, and the bronze goes to Uzbekistan. So everything goes to Asia. Well, that was a great competition. You just saw the board that he was signing there. That's just to say that he agrees to a dope test. And there you can see the clean and jerk uh, rankings. Well, Alimov denied uh, Kim a set of silver medals, but I don't think Kim's going to be too worried about that. And you can see at the bottom there, two men who failed to complete. Well, you've seen something very special. You've seen... Lu Xiechung collect a third world title to go to or go alongside the ones that he collected in Goyang in 2009 in Paris in 2011 and there the total at 380 kilos that is one kilo more than he lifted to win gold in London. Well, maybe it was...